So here we are, two months since starting the project, and this is how it looks. The setup of the flight area came to £175 in total, which is quite good value when compared to the outlay required for a lot of other hobbies. So let's take a look through the species we've included in the flight area and see how each of them has performed. So first we have the Flame Dryas Julia. We purchased 10 pupae of these at £2.34 each and 8 of those 10 pupae emerged perfectly. As you saw, we had lots of pairings, lots of eggs, and ultimately a lot of larvae. So these are a really good starting species, particularly with a small flight area such as this. Then we had Sethosia cyan, the leopard lace swing. Purchased 10 of these at £1.50 each, and 9 of those 10 pupae emerged perfectly. There was 4 pairings in just one day on one occasion, and there was dozens of egg batches from them. So as long as you have a bright sunny greenhouse, then this is certainly a good species to try. Then we have the great egg fly, Hyperlimnus bellina. Purchased 10 pupae of these at £1.32 each. 7 of the 10 emerged perfectly, which isn't too bad. These also paired really easily, but we did find that they preferred to lay most of their eggs on the nettles, rather than the Ipomoea that was provided. So you might wish to go for nettles instead. Then we have Morpho Helena, the blue Morpho. These cost £3.12 each, and we had 9 out of the 10 emerge perfectly. Considering they are quite a large butterfly, they flew really well in the greenhouse, and fertile eggs were laid on the peanut plants. They do lay more prolifically on vines such as Macuna, but it's perfectly possible to breed and rear them with just the peanut available. Then we have the Papilios, which is Polites and Demolius. These cost £1.32 each, and we had 8 of the 10 Polites hatch, and 7 of the 10 Demolius. Papilio Loi, alongside those, was £1.80 per pupae, and 9 out of the 10 of those emerged perfectly. All of the Papilios paired really easily, and we had a lot of eggs on the Troisia stems, so again these are definitely some species that would be super useful if you're just starting out. Then we have the Owl Butterfly, Caligo Memnon. These were £2.76 each, and we had 7 out of the 10 pupae hatch perfectly. Now this is the only species where we were unsuccessful at getting pairings or eggs, but usually these are quite an easy species to breed. But it can depend on a lot of different factors, some of them including exactly where these pupae have come from, maybe they need slightly different conditions to normal, or maybe we were just unlucky. But it is still definitely one of those iconic butterflies that are really nice to try in your greenhouse and see what happens. Then we have the Porcemen, Heliconius melpomene. These were £3 each, but were supplied as live adults, so they didn't have to be hatched. Herrings and egg laying was witnessed, but one thing to watch out for is if you keep several species of Heliconius together, such as Dryas julia, zebras and porcelain butterflies, then the more prolific species will generally suppress the others, so it's one thing to watch out for. Finally, we have the glass swings, these were £4 each, and again supplied as live adults. Lots of eggs were laid on the cestrum, and we had some larvae that went all the way through to pupae and again hatched out. These particularly enjoyed the lower sections of the greenhouse, living in the shade most of the time, but they did really well, 
and it's one species where they require a lot less heat but at much higher humidity. So if you have a very shaded greenhouse, these would be perfect. So in summary, to get 9 out of the 10 species to breed on the first attempt is really quite good, and it shows what can be achieved in a small space on a tight budget. The only major problem that we did have with the greenhouse was controlling the temperature, particularly in terms of it overheating. Opening the door, as well as the vents, was one easy way to solve this but you may need to put some shading over the greenhouse or carry out additional watering to bring the temperature down. You could also add some fans to draw in cool air and remove the warm air, and that would work really well too. So that's it for this project. I hope that it has encouraged some of you to have a go at trying this at home. It doesn't have to cost a fortune to keep butterflies, as long as you are careful to get the conditions right so your butterflies are happy. Then you should have lots of success with them. If there are any other aspects of keeping tropical butterflies that you'd like us to cover, then feel free to leave a comment below, and I'll see you in another video.